Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and one of the unwritten rules of hobby shops is really pretty universal. It's have a play area, keep it nice enough, big enough, clean enough, whatever, but also, most importantly, do not charge money for it. It just gives the wrong impression, it can negatively affect sales, there's nothing positive about it, right? Well, believe it or not, once in a great while, I get some kind of story about, oh yeah, if you're going to use the play area, you have to pay the play area fee or whatever. So it's not that weird. I mean, it's just like I heard people hold FNM for free. That's insane to me. I've also heard people say that it's like $15 entry. It's pretty much universally $5 to go to FNM. But because, you know, there are no actual rules you get little variations because if I opened up a gaming store, well, I mean more so than the one I currently have, like one that actually has a play area. We actually do have a play area. It's one very nice table with two very nice chairs and that's it. But if I opened like a more standard format, traditional hobby shop type place, um, it's up to me what I want to do with it. I could charge for whatever I want and, you know, within the WPN restrictions, do whatever I want. I could say... 100 cards singleton popper is what we're playing for FNM. That is allowed. Uh, we're charging 50 bucks for it entry fee. Uh, the top four finishers all get an entire booster box of their choice, we'll say. All of these things I could do, it's up to me. It's just people have kind of settled in on certain norms. I mean, FNM is standard. It costs $5. It's on Friday. That one actually is required. That's the norm. But along with that, the play area is always free because if you give people a place to play, you create the demand and maybe they'll buy something. Well, apparently not everybody sees it that way. Um, I'm sure somebody's already typing their story down in the comment section about their LGS or one that they used to go to or that they heard about where they charge to use the play area. Well, let's try and get inside the head of somebody who would make that wonderful decision. So one, okay, they're completely losing money or they're not making enough money to stay in business. Um, you know, if the owner's making 5,000 profit a year, not quite enough to live on, but they're not actually losing money. He just needs more money or she. So then they say, okay, what can we do? We could, you know, we could advertise, which costs money up front and is not guaranteed a return. That's stupid. We could change this. What are com customers complaining about? Is there a product line people have been asking about? You know, improve the inventory. Um, those are like operational things. I mean, you know, get a brand new sign and clean up the front of the building and fix the parking lot. That all costs money. Those are typically not options. Personally, as a multiple small business owner, I will tell you it is not smart and not something that's commonly done uh, where you say, well, I'm going to do this and it might return some money in the long term if you're losing money in fact if you're making money it's still not a very good prospect so fixing the parking lot and spending five thousand dollars on an ad campaign not smart now doing a collaboration with the media holding an event you know all this clever stuff okay i get it but some people just want to do it the lazy way they maybe they work another job and they just run the lgs on the side it might not be laziness it might be time but then again i mean you opened a second business while you have a job. Guess what? You don't have any free time now. You made that decision. The whole turnkey, I'm going to operate it from a distance thing, you should have opened a restaurant, not a local gaming store. But whether it's laziness or it is almost their last option, they say we have to monetize some stuff. Do we take our most popular products and raise the prices slightly because that's automatic income right off the bat? Um, do you risk that ruining your business? Do you pick up a second product chain? Do you import an entire box of 144 fidget spinners? I bet the answer is yes for most of your hobby stores, unfortunately. Do they mark up the food? Do they start selling food and drinks? Um, what are they going to do? They need to monetize either what they're already doing or add something that they know is a, a guaranteed hit. But then it comes down to like, if people were asking for it or it was noticeably missing before or you noticed it at another LGS and you didn't copy them like what i don't get it what why why would you not have drinks why would you not have cans of pop for like a dollar so besides new product launches adding additional services that kind of thing and maybe you don't think that you can get away with um you know 10 percent higher prices across the board for magic singles or something well what else are you gonna do what what other reason do people have for walking in the door so you can see where i'm going with this obviously it's start charging for use of the room because uh, people walking in the door at any shop, business, service, any place, 
and then not spending anything at all and then walking out the door, that's bad because whether or not they needed employee attention, it's still kind of like a cost. Like you effectively lost money. And I don't just mean opportunity cost or loss or whatever they call that. It's they might have literally cost you money, like time, attention, additional staff. Um, you know, maybe they just came in to use the bathroom. That's a fun one because they, you know, there goes toilet paper, water, heat, light, everything. Now it's not usually much, and it's not like, you know, you're running a department store where you got fifty staff members, so if ten percent of people are walking in and not spending anything and asking the employees a question, you probably do need uh, what would that be? Like five additional employees to handle just those people. And those are costing you money. Now, usually an LGS has like one or two people. The, it doesn't scale with volume and whatever. So it may or may not cost you money. But the one thing is it's not making you money. So I can see in, we'll say a desperate mind, somebody could legitimize charging, you know, a dollar, two dollars a day or sell a pass or, you know, monthly or whatever for use of the gaming area, you know, because that's the number one thing that people are coming in, spending zero, and then leaving. So besides just a greedy shop owner who's just like, I'm making plenty of money, but there's always room for more. Maybe they read some just stupid book. You guys know who I'm talking about, the people who buy books and read them. You know, the self-help, motivational, you be your own boss, you know, all these nonsense books that only idiots would buy. Well, it turns out, yeah, idiots shouldn't be running businesses because they'll make brilliant decisions like this. You know, it's written by some corporate, like, literal psychopath who's greedy, immoral, and pretends to sell you knowledge that you could have just gotten on the internet. So they read that book and it says, monetize everything. If your customers aren't spending as much as humanly possible, you're doing it wrong because you need to make the most possible. There's always more, 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 more money to be made. You know, basically like Apple, like that, that type of ridiculousness where they don't give a crap how much cash reserves they have. They're going to keep using borderline slave labor out in like Brazil to build their completely malfunctional garbage phones that all have massive defects and, you know, pretend to be an Irish company all because they need to make more, even though logically by anybody's assessment, they don't need to make more. So I guess you could call that the two reasons that somebody would monetize the play area and start charging people to use it. And a third one is maybe they're getting way the hell too many people or they're getting like homeless people or just obnoxious little kids or teenagers like just hanging out there because they have nowhere else to be. So they just want to get rid of them by putting a dollar amount on it. Um, that I could see actually as a solution. It's just you'd piss off so many other people. There's no polite way to be like, oh, no loitering in the gaming area. Like, and what are you going to walk up and tell them, hey, we don't like you just sitting here because... Like, I don't have a reason. Like, how would you do that? How would you actually do that? So to keep random freeloading loiterers out of your gaming area, okay, but I very rarely heard of that being a a thing. So three reasons. Okay, three reasons. I'm going to stop thinking of more because you guys get it. Okay, so now we're past it. The shop owner made that decision. What are the negative ramifications? Or on the flip side, why would you not want to do this in the first place? Well, one, like I said, a free place to play is huge. Like, you can't undercut that. If your friends want to get up and go out and do something, but, oh, movies cost money, and that costs money, and that costs money, restaurants cost money, and, you know, you'd rather not just ride your bikes around because it's not that nice of weather. Okay, where do you go? Oh, let's go here. It doesn't cost anything. Well, besides the people who literally just go there and sit there and do nothing, which is rare... Now they have a place to go and do something. So when somebody does have money, especially teenagers, they're going to spend it because they don't have, you know, rent or other significant expenses that are mandatory. And plus, I mean, I do mean literally a place to play. Some people have too small of apartments like mine um, or like they live with seven other people. So if they have people over to their house and they try and clear off the kitchen table to play a game of Monopoly or something, it just ain't going to happen. There's too many distractions, too many people. And the kitchen table is a nightmare. Well, let's see. School's out, so you can't play at school. And then the library doesn't like you playing because it's too loud. It's like, where do you go? Like, I'm sure you'd love to teach your friends how to play Settlers of Catan, but if you quite literally do not have a space to play, you're not going to buy the game in the first place. So having a place to meet up is huge, 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 huge. I mean, even you could start ruling out like Burger King, McDonald's, Starbucks, all the places where people do usually go out and just hang long term. Or for me, the Chinese buffet. Good luck mixing Magic the Gathering or Settlers of Catan with Sweet and Sour Chicken, okay? Your your gear, your board game, your everything you own is going to get sticky. 
It's like living with toddlers. Your whole life is now sticky. You're just going to have to get over it. I, I don't personally live with toddlers, but my niece and nephew are quite young. So a six-foot table that's clean and doesn't have sweet and sour chicken on it, there you go. I mean, it, it, it really is. I mean, oh, it's just a table and chairs. Who cares? It's just free space, whatever. But no, you really, fr from a sales standpoint, you have to consider giving people a place to play. It's just like the old uh, fireworks problem. Awfully hard to sell fireworks if you know that the police in every surrounding county are going to, like, arrest any of your customers for shooting off anything. Some places are really aggressive like that. I think um, places where you could light the entire state on fire on accident, um, they ban them, but you could drive right across the border and just buy them. I think it's like... Uh, God, I don't think these are even next to each other, but like a Nebraska, Tennessee type of thing. I think that's the example somebody gave me. I'm too lazy to pull up a map. Just kidding. I just pulled up a map. They are, in fact, not right next to each other. Missouri's in the way, but uh, what else is new? Just kidding, Missouri people. I don't even know what insult that was. That wasn't even a very good joke. Oh, Missouri always getting in the way of, of people trying to go down the Mississippi River. Well, it's like you don't open a surf shop in freaking Wyoming. You have to give your customers a place to use your product. If they don't have one, it doesn't work. It's just like trying to sell really, really expensive high-end sports cars when there's no drag strips or racetracks within 100 miles. It's not going to go very well, necessarily. That's not a set-in-stone one, but you guys get the idea. So you actually are already making money off of your play area just by it existing and... People who don't know business, they, they can't see the intangibles, they don't truly know how to read a balance sheet, they just go by the cold hard numbers and see what's monetized, what's making money, what's not, they're not going to get that. But I get it because, I don't know, we learned this in like 8th grade, it's not exactly hard. I did go to a really nice high school though. Oh, I also skipped most of my last year of high school and went to college early. But the key point is I did not major in business and yet I still know this. Now here's the problem, and I could give some people some leeway on this. If they're bringing in games that they've owned in their family for 15 years, because who the hell doesn't have a copy of Monopoly laying around somewhere, they bring those in from home and play them in your shop and then leave and, and never buy anything. Okay, I could see that. I could see somebody getting a little aggravated about that. Oh my god, that just made me remember something that's now going to be the topic of the next LGS from hell. Part... I'm sure we're on 13 by now. Lucky number 13. Watch for that in the near future. It's going to be store, it's short. It's one story. But, oh, this one's a doozy. Anyway, I could see a shop owner getting mad because then they know, they absolutely know or 100% certain that they're not making any money off of those particular people. But the flip side of, hey, people walking in and spending zero then wasting your time and walking out is bad is you have to accept that a certain amount of people are going to do that. If you're a lawyer and you do one hour free consultations so that somebody can see if they have a case or they don't, then, you know, maybe even 50% of them are not going to turn into customers and they're not going to spend any money. It, it is what it is, whatever. I mean, it's just part of your business. It's the nature of what you do. You have to accept that, build it into the price of the people who are customers, <laughs> unfortunately, as unfair as that is. And that's lovely and all, but let's back up. When at your local gaming store have you seen someone, or I should say in the entire time you've been going there, can you name one person that has not spent more than $10 at the hobby shop or whatever your LGS is? Some of them don't consider themselves hobby shops. I should probably stop saying that. So your LGS, can you name one person going there that's been going there for a while that hasn't at least made $10 cumulatively worth of purchases? I mean, I could probably even raise it to 30, and most of you would still say, no, even like the little kids or the people who pop in occasionally once a month, you know, sleeves, a deck box, a couple packs, one FNM entry, yeah, you know, okay. Like, you'd have to almost be trying to not give an LGS money. And that goes double if they're selling, like, snacks or drinks or something, because, I mean, you gotta drink. I mean, you're already there, you're probably there for, you know, an hour or two playing a game, at some point, you're going to get thirsty, but maybe they're nice and they have a bubbler. Yes, it's called a bubbler. On the original patent, it's called a bubbler. A water fountain is what they put up in parks. Also, it's called pop, not soda. Also, it's called a cookie, not a biscuit. I'm going across the pond for this one. Anyway, somebody could sit there and sit there and sit there and not spend money, not spend money because they're super broke and they don't have a job. They're 13 or they're technically unemployed at the moment or they've got medical bills they got to deal with and every penny has to go to that or they're slightly in debt or their electricity is about to be shut off okay i get it like they start bumming cards and dice and stuff off people like whatever people got situations 
But then six months later, they get some money for the birthday of Christmas and they're sitting in the LGS and they're like, oh, I really like those sleeves and they buy them. I mean, it's virtually unheard of for somebody to not convert, as they say, to turn into a customer or to convert into a sale, a purchase. Now, if somebody... <laughs> I can't get through this straight face. I can't do it. If somebody personally has a vendetta against a store, hmm, I wonder what Desolator could be talking about. But if somebody does have a very significant problem with the staff and the way an LGS is run, so they're going out of their way to never, ever buy anything there, ever. I get that. That's a possibility. Like, purposely ordering your cards online, even though it's sitting in front of you in a binder for $2.00. That's hardcore. Like, that's, you are really, really going out of your way to not give the LGS any money. But then you probably have a good reason. Either that or you have some kind of weird, like, paranoid mental problem or something. I don't know. So, okay, people are here for free. They're not spending anything. They're not spending anything. Eventually, they will. Be confident that 99% of people, eventually, they will, okay? And for the couple that don't, okay, write it off, whatever, who cares? Like, not everybody's going to give you money. Welcome to business. But even beyond that, everybody knows the, the silent, unwritten, nobody mentions it golden rule, which is support your local gaming store. It's actually not that silent. I'm pretty sure Wizard says that all the time. I don't know why I said that. But it's kind of just like something you catch on to where, I mean, maybe somebody will outright say it. Somebody will say, oh, well, they got them here for three. Oh, I can, I can get them online for $250. i will just get them on, online. And then, like, everybody looks at them like they're an alien, and then somebody might whisper to them, you know, it's, it's, you know, you got to support your LGS. It's not polite to just buy stuff online or they're going to go out of business. Now, whether that's entirely truthful compared to the current books, you know, in accounting, uh, who knows, but it's just a theme. It's a thing. And a lot of people catch on without even catching on, you know, the whole shop, small shop, local, all those movements and stuff. They've been really big in the last 10 years. People get it, especially if like the owners there, they work there and you know them. It's like, you know who the money's going to. It ain't some big chain corporation. Like, if you don't want to give money to Walmart, that's perfectly fine. Those things aren't even owned locally. They are owned by the company. So 100% of the profits go to the company. So it's like, even if something costs a little bit more, it's not just, oh, the convenience of not having to wait a week for it to ship. It's just like, oh, the card costs four bucks instead of two. Whatever, I like to support my LGS. You know, I hear that all the time. Or I just see people kind of doing that, and it's pretty obvious. So I think that's cool of people, and, you know, it's the same for sleeves and deck boxes and all that. And some of that stuff, they have a natural advantage uh, locally because, I mean, I think at one of the ones I went to was like four fifty for a deck box. It's like $4 plus $1.99 shipping on eBay. You literally cannot get it for cheaper. I mean, it's just not flat, and it costs $2.61 minimum to get it to your house. So they got that going for them, but even when they are, you know, atrociously overpriced, or if you thought, oh, I could get this board game here sealed for 40 or I could get, like, a used one online for 20 and you're just like, ah, am I going to be that cheap? I mean, you know, they've had this on the shelf forever. I'm just going to buy it. I like to support them. That is definitely in the back of every player's mind at, you know, any given time, and it is powerful. I'd say well over half, if not 75%, or even all of the people that commonly go to FNM will go out of their way to buy stuff from the store. Like, they'll say, oh, I could have stopped and gotten a drink and some food, but I'm going to buy you know, a can of whatever and a bottle of whatever and this from them when I get there because then at least they're making, you know, like a two-to-one profit on the food at least. Plus, it's the whole good faith thing where it's like, hey, look, I'm spending money here. Yay, I'm not a freeloader. And that's the other thing, the psychological pressure for people to self-represent themselves as, like, not a freeloader. Like, even I will say, boy, I haven't bought anything here in literally an entire month. What the hell? I will find something to buy because, you know... The, the owner might start looking at me funny and thinking, but he never spends any money here. And, like, the real polite ones will treat everybody equally. Uh, my old LGS from hell, you don't exist unless you pre-ordered a case. They, they don't even want to talk to you. They don't even want to acknowledge that you are there. And if you did order a case or more, um, you can cheat all you want. They do not give a crap. That's just how that one operates, but uh, most of them aren't like that. But I think people still are worried. They're always worried about how other people perceive them and never spending money, you do kind of get the idea that you're kind of freeloading. So everything added together, I get logically why somebody would implement a, you know, one, two, three dollar fee to use their uh, area for a day or like, you know, whatever. I've heard all different structures and stuff like for events, it's great. But if you just want to go there and play, 
it's free with any purchase or you can get a pass with any purchase like literally any purchase above five dollars and you can use the area for a month i think i've heard that one too but then you look at all the counter evidence like they're making money it, it's free but you're making money that's really the key so if you're an lgs owner do not start charging for it there is one exception if it is like stupidly nice and there's like not even rentals, but just like publicly available, whatever. Like, okay, let me let me paint a picture for you. This is actually not based on anything real. I just totally made this up, but it would be nice. So let's say you got some tabletop people. You got like your Warhammer people, your Mech Warrior people. You got, um, you know, it's a real big LGS. You got people coming in. You got the D&D &D people and you make available just on all the sides and the walls and bookshelves and everything. You got a bucket of, of various dice. You got D20s that people could use. Um... I kind of wouldn't because that kills sales, honestly. Like, if the person literally needs dice to play D&D &D and that's the only thing they need because the DM bought the actual campaign and the books, yeah. But then, you know, you got, like, printed character sheets. You got, like I said, dice. You got um, miniatures that people can use as long as they put them back. And then you got, like, terrain. You've got 3D objects where people can, like, assemble their own custom grids. And then they got, like, the vinyl mats that you can use. But they could have, like, props, they could have, like, trees that are, like, the, you know, the right grade to go in, like, a, a model train railroad type of setup. I mean, just nice publicly available stuff that you know wasn't cheap. I mean, it wasn't exactly donated. Like, obviously, it was, like, old stock or they got a vendor sample or something. But either way, they didn't sell it. They put it out there for you to use completely for free. So it's not just you're getting the area for free. You're getting the use of everything there for free. And then let's say they keep it super clean you know, which you got to pay staff a little bit higher to clean, you know, every single day than just do customer support. So, you know, that's costing them money. And then all the chairs are working. None of them, you know, tilt backwards or feel like you're going to die if you're over 200 pounds. I mean, you probably are, but I mean, not from falling off the chair. I don't know of anybody who died from falling off a chair, actually. That's a terrible example. I pretty much just made fun of fat people. But I am technically 203 pounds, so keep that in mind. But you don't feel like you'll get badly maimed or sent to the emergency room because of a chair malfunction. The tables aren't all full of sweet and sour chicken. They clean them like every hour or every time somebody gets up like at some kind of restaurant. And then maybe they have like a bowl of free candy or free breath mints available. Oh, and they've got a water fountain or one of those fancy corporate ones with the blub 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 jug on top. I'm sure that's the official name. Oh, then the bathrooms are super nice, and I mean, they have like giveaways and flyers and old promotional posters and stuff you can take home and old displays for magic that they're probably legally supposed to burn. I'm having fun with this, let's get ridiculous. They got two Xboxes in a Wii, plus a projector for the Wii. That sounds strangely specific, why'd you say that, Des? Hmm, maybe because we have a projector and four controllers and a Wii in the back of my shop. And then they've got, like, gaming computers so your stupid League of Legends team can come and play stupid League of Legends. And then people who aren't douchebags show up and actually play MechWarrior. Okay, I'm basically just describing, like, an internet cafe, which, yes, you would pay by the hour there. But scrap that, all the rest, I get it, the rentals, you're making use of it, you're getting a benefit out of it, and the stuff wasn't free. I mean, you sitting your butt in a chair and, and playing a game is pretty much free, but as soon as you start using the stuff and... You know, maybe it wears out over time. It's kind of expendable items like, you know, dry erase markers on vinyl mats for the one inch, one inch squares. They don't last forever. You know that you're getting some value out of it beyond just, hey, it's a place to play. Then I could see people selling either like month long or year long membership passes to use the amazing super duper gaming room. And, um, you know, maybe every Friday they got like free bagels or donuts or something. I mean, like that kind of thing. I get it. But would I implement that? For all of you LGS owners that watch my channel, all none of you, if you're like, yes, I'm going to do that, that would make my place the most popular hangout ever and I could make so much money, it would just be 100 bucks a day for people to just go in there and sit there and all I have to do is provide them with some materials that I get at cost anyway. That's awesome. Well, keep in mind, you'd almost have to have a free gaming area right next to it. <laughs> it would be like the VIP lounge and the, the peasant area. Oh, it's the free table for free stuff and you don't get to use anything and then how would you police it and that's just rude to your customers i don't think it's a good idea so let's say you don't have a free area at all well the problem with that is that you don't have a free area to play remember all the benefits i said that people get with having a free area well now it's not free and if you made it dirt dirt cheap then it's like why bother you're kind of on the borderline where it's like oh a dollar per person per day well great we made ten dollars today like who cares 
If it was completely free, you probably would have resulted in an additional $10 purchase or more from one random person that's like, oh, cool, we could just play here for free. So as cool as that would sound, and that could be your hook if there's like four other LGSs in your area, overall, I don't think it's a good idea, but it is more than a valid excuse to start charging money for the gaming area. Oh, and obviously for official play, like, you know, league play for Pokemon, I think that's what they call it, and FNM and all that, you would just let people in for free because there's an entry fee anyway. It's like you charge five bucks for FNM and you get entry to the gaming area, duh. I mean, this isn't like a Packers game where they're like, oh, you already bought your ticket, but you also have to pay to park because screw you. Unless your friend's mom has a handicap sticker, then, then you don't. So I really want to hear from you guys. Have you had a place that tried it? Did they used to be free? Was it always not free? Have they switched? Have you been to one that shut down because of it? Have you been to one where they talked about it or tried it or anything related to this? Have you even heard a story from your friends about a place that did this and did it work? Did it not? Were there complaints? Was it negatively received or positively received? Because I know my opinion on it and I've heard stories from people, but it's usually like two sentences in a comment or some little tweet on Twitter or something. I would love to hear like actual detailed real world uh, things. Although if you go over a about 400 characters automatically marked as spam on YouTube. Don't know if you knew that. And I don't always catch it. Like catch it as in unmark it as spam and let it be a legit comment. So don't get nuts. Don't write a whole short novel. But if you have a story, we'd love to hear about it down below. So make sure you guys check out the comment section because I'm sure there will be some interesting stuff here. Except for the first five minutes where it'll just be first and notification squad. So thanks for watching. Hopefully your gaming area is still free. And I will see you guys next video. Guys next.